Hey guys, welcome back to Lick Branch Farms. Today is an exciting day here on the farm. I'm glad you could join us. And we are going to get right into this video and I'm going to explain to you why it is so exciting. So during the last video, I told you that we were going to be stepping out into the hydroponic production side of this thing. And I was getting together a lot of materials and stuff like that to work with. But today we will start our very first seeds for hydroponic production here on this farm i know that's freaking awesome ain't it but anyway i kind of want to give you guys an update on everything else we had been talking about number one heater in working good big old gas tank sitting right there yeah they came and hooked all that up yesterday i test fired it last night thing works like a dream i set it on 45 degrees last night I walked down here this morning, it was 37 degrees outside and it was 42 degrees in this greenhouse. So I'm not gonna argue about three degrees. So I did have to put some wood up um, on the edges, like in the very corners and I got a whole lot of mess. Y'all don't pay no attention to that. Wood in the corners there to kind of seal those up. Cause that tends to be where the wind likes to come in um, when it blows. And I kind of wanted to seal that portion of it off. And uh, this roll of plastic here, is going to be for the roll-up sides. Now, we are going to get away from these sliding panels. You've seen these things, me slide this thing back and forth for many years. Well, I say many years, a couple of years. And they have served their purpose. But guys, these panels, if I had to guess, are probably close to 20 years old. And, you know, it doesn't take very much to break one. Um, and some of the winds that we have in the wintertime, I really don't see them making it through another year. And plus, I'm trying to automate this process as much as possible and eventually we will have automated size to where when that fan kicks on oh yeah and by the way that fan is actually on a thermostat now to where it cuts itself off and on with a temperature i got it set on 75 degrees and you can see it running and it is 80 degrees in here so it's working like it's supposed to but being that this is going to be our nft lettuce slash greens house I want this house to be as automated as possible. I want the heat to come on when it's supposed to. I want the fans to come on when it's supposed to. And I want the size to roll up to cool it off in here if need be. And this thing just run out of fertilizer. That's why I hear all that air. Okay. Let's turn that off. Yeah, fertilizing those uh, tomatoes. And man, they got some beautiful tomatoes on this thing. Let's see, look. I got still got trellis on my started, but I haven't finished yet. What's sitting over there? That dude's that big around. And there's plenty more down there on that end. And I see little ones everywhere, so I gotta get busy and get on trellis. Right, so, quick update. I got material in. I, well, I got some material in. I got what I've ordered so far. These are the traps. These are the NFT traps. And you heard me talk about them earlier. There's two part lids, 12 holes per track. These are eight foot. There's 20 of them in that box right there. And I've also got all the fittings and the lids and all this stuff. You can sell these end caps, um, front caps, all this and then i got the 90s to go on the or excuse me the 45s to go on the end so when we make the drains we can kind of make everything semi watertight all of this stuff here come from crop king crop king and i've got the these are going to be my nursery trays or they're going to be my um germination trays let's put it that way i'm going to set this system up and there's probably going to be more than these two there's probably going to be two or three sets of them to where i got a small um tank full of nutrient solution at a third of the rate to keep pumping through these things two or three times a day so they get fertilized while they are still in the germination chamber or some germ germination tray mode slash yeah it's a little bit funky than what i'm used to but not impossible all right so before we can even get to that part of the process we've got to get some seed started and um you heard me say i got 20 tracks and by the time that these trays that we get ready to see here are ready to put into those tracks. I'll have probably 20 or 40 more, I don't know. But I kind of want to give you an idea of what we got to work with. All right, so there's different methods you can go to seeding crops. Um, there's Oasis trays you can use. There is uh, rot wool. And I chose to go with Oasis. And you can see this stuff here. This stuff is really not cheap. Um, you can see, you can look at it wrong and this stuff breaks. It is very, very, very fragile. Um, me picking it up as heavy handed as I am, picking it up like this, it almost feels like I am going to leave an indention in it with my finger. See, this stuff is very, very fragile. And 
but from what i understand it's you know one of the best things you can use and looking at it see it's already serrated to where it'll break apart in the one inch cubes now i got this shallow bootstrap farmer tray and what i'm gonna do is get some well water in which i tested it well water here on my farm has a ph of like 5.5 and that's what we want we want to be within like 5.4 to 6.2 somewhere around in there so I'm gonna get a bucket full of well water and I'm gonna go ahead and saturate this tray and I'm gonna tell you the four varieties of greens that we're gonna start our hydroponic journey on for the very first planting here on Lick Branch Farm. All right guys, so I'm gonna kinda try to keep you out the sun as much as possible. So the four, the very first varieties that we're gonna plant for hydroponic production here on the farm, one of them is a leaf lettuce and this is called Tropicana. We are gonna do um, days 276 one inch um, cubes in this tray and we are going to do probably five rows and ends now remember these nfts only have 12 spots per um, channel for plants so what we're trying to do is mimic about two 50 foot rows of it out there in the main garden but i mean i've got a whole case of these things when i bought them it was cheaper for me to buy them by the case than it was my i'll be honest with you these things are like 12 dollars a piece that's what these things run is about 12 dollars a piece and I could buy a case of them, and they were $6 a piece, so um, that's a no-brainer for me. Anyway, the second variety is another lettuce variety, is New Red Fire. Now, this lettuce really impressed me last winter when all of my lettuces in this tunnel were getting um, cold and freeze um, damage on them. That New Red Fire would just keep plowing right through it, not even hinted of having any problems whatsoever with the cold. Um, I'm not really choosing that variety because of the cold because, duh, we got a heater now. But I am doing it because it was an easy seller. It was eye appealing. People seen it. They loved it. We sold everything we grew last year. So, yeah, that's a, that's, you know, a no-brainer too. So, the next thing is bok choy. Now, we cannot grow bok choy in the summer here simply because of it bolting. It will not. I mean, you just change the temperature one degree one way or the other and it bolts. I want to try it in here to see what it does. I see a lot of good things online, people being able to be successful with bok choy in a hydroponic setting. So, I mean, we're going to do two seeds per, per, per hole. So that's going to be 24 plants per channel. So hopefully we can maximize production that way. And the last, the fourth and last variety is going to be bright light Swiss chard. Now, during winter, Swiss chard is a money maker. I mean, that kale, for us, that, um lacinato kale and curly kale i mean if i couldn't take the three greens those would be it because i could sell every bit of it what i got here is well water in this bucket and like i told you earlier it's got a ph of like 5.4 5.5 um as long as we stay in there in that range um below 6.2 6.4 we're gonna be in good shape and you can see how i'm watering this stuff in it can take a lot of water to saturate these cubes and I'm doing it by cup now, but eventually I'll have a pump set up to where I can pump this stuff on here when I get this system set up over here. Oh yeah, and by the way, I know y'all heard me say 36, 37 degrees a while ago. We have already had our first frost. We had two frosts back to back. And you can see it bit these eggplants. I didn't bring them in, but it kind of bit them eggplants a little bit because they were still outside. But um, we did lose two trays of cucumbers, which... You know, I really wasn't expecting them to do a whole lot anyway, but um, yeah, kind of like um, crossing some kind of threshold into wintertime for us because normally we don't get a frost until the end of October, but yeah, we did. So that was all the more reason I needed to go ahead and get this heater done. All right, so if you look down in there, I can see some water pooled up in the hole. That's a good sign. That's what we want. That's the area bubbles. So what we're going to do is I'm going to tip this tray over and I'm going to put it back into this bucket. I'm going to pour, you know, a little bit off and just so we don't drown these seeds, so we don't saturate everything.
Yeah, I'm looking it over and I don't see any water pooling, so I guess that's a good sign. And it's damp, and it's damp as it can get, so time to start putting some seeds in the hole. All right, so I'm gonna start putting this lettuce seed in the ground and in the ground, in the cubes. And what we're gonna do is basically just drop it into the holes. And I got both hands full of it, so I'd put you, show you guys what I'm doing. But each one of these rows has got 12 holes. So I'm figuring I'm gonna do five of each. And that should be enough to get us, um, you know, 60 plants to where we can kind of get this thing started. And like I said, we are gonna be getting more channels to do this with and by the time these two guys germinate and are ready to go out into those channels then we'll have enough to uh kind of do a whole lot more so i'm gonna focus on getting this lettuce in these trays get this bow pack well that's the variety but it's bok choy in these trays and getting the swiss chard in here and get this first tray to germinate All right, so I got the two lettuce varieties. I got the Tropicana, and I got the New Red Fire, and I got the um, bok choy in. Getting ready to start the uh, Bright Light Swiss chard, and I noticed that I got three extra rows in here, so I got another variety of lettuce that I'm gonna put in here. This is Skyphos, and it's a butterhead variety, and uh, we don't have any problem getting rid of it either, so I'm gonna do three rows of Skyphos just so I can say I got enough lettuce. And then I'm gonna put the last five rows of Swiss chard in. All right guys, so the last one I'm gonna do is gonna be the Swiss chard. Now, I know from experience growing Swiss chard in the soil that sometimes these, these seeds can be a little tricky and they almost look like beet seeds. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put two seeds per hole just so we know at least hopefully one of them will germinate. And if we get more than one sprout, then once we get a, a plug that is ready to go in this channel, you know, we'll just pick out the ones that we don't need and kind of get it down to the best looking one. All right, guys, so that is the first tray that we have sown for our new hydroponic NFT system. If that's the best way I can explain it. That is the very first hydroponic seeds I've ever sown. I don't, I shouldn't say hydroponic seeds, I should say seeds sown for a hydroponic system. Method. That sounds better. So yeah, what I'm gonna do now is get those guys in the germination chamber. We should be able to germinate these, those seeds just like the rest of our seeds. We should be able to put them on the heat mats, um, get them up to germination temperature. We're gonna have to use humidity dome on them because that moisture is you know, obviously gonna wanna escape really quick. So we're gonna lay a piece of plastic over it for now just to kind of collect some of that heat. And once we see the first signs of them germination, germinating, we're gonna remove that and just let it take its, you know, let the process run, let it take its course. All right, guys, I just thought of something. I'm going to try this. Um, I've got it sitting on a heat mat. I've got these mats set on 70 or 65 degrees. So I'm going to take another 10, 20 tray, and I'm going to sit right over the top of it. Now, that's basically going to create a humidity dome over there, and I'm going to have to check this every day. And once I see the first signs of germination, I'm going to have to take that off. And I bet you the bok choy is the first one to germinate bok choy i mean out in the soil outside i can get it to germinate in three days so yeah excited to have that part of us behind us because i'm probably going to start another tray or two sometime this weekend and it more than likely will be kale and things of that nature um because i do know that i'm gonna have more than that 20 um tracks or channels when i finally do put this system in operation i'll have more than what i got now i'm thinking i might have 60 channels so I got to get enough plants ready to put in those 60 channels so we can get this thing started. So yeah, I'm going to get off here and get busy, but be looking for the next video. Like I said, we're going to be doing a lot more stuff when it comes to setting the system up, especially these tracks. And I'll give you a shot of what the germination looks like on this tray when we come back on the next video. So guys, if you like what you saw today, reach over here and click that subscribe button. 
and click the bell notification so you get notified every time we put out a video go ahead and hit that like button and guys we appreciate you stopping by thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next one